Over the years, we have traveled by car and by RV as we go across this country. There are pros and cons to both. Which one would you prefer? Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Orlean. I'm Gary. And if you're new to our channel, we'll kind of get you up to speed here a little bit. We have been living full time in a fifth wheel RV for the last four and a half years since August of 2017. And we love it. Hmm. Recently, my mom passed away in Rochester, Minnesota. And we needed to travel up there. But because it was the end of January and very cold up in Minnesota and Wisconsin, mm. we decided to rent a van and head on up there with that instead of taking our RV. We could not have taken our RV in that cold weather. So we were refreshed on the differences of hotels and traveling by car and the and and what it's like being in an RV and we just thought we would share with you some of the pros and cons of each if you want to know a little more about our trip and uh, what that was like and then uh, just kind of filling you in and, and doing some updates with you Check out our last video. The, I'll put a link to it up above here or at the end of this video today. Okay, we're going to be reading this, so bear with us. All right, the pros and cons. First of all, with an RV, you carry your home with you. You never have to pack suitcases or forget anything, <laughs> like your toothbrushes. Yeah, you your, can... Your hairbrush. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you can always buy things that you forget, but with an RV, it's all there. It's like carrying your suitcase with you and living in it. Kind of. Sort of. <laughs> Traveling with an RV, we get to stay in RV parks or parking lots, do some boondocking. Uh, many different options of places you can stay and we always get to sleep in our own bed at night. Yes. Versus if you are staying in a hotel or an Airbnb and you're sleeping in a different bed every night. Uh, we only stayed, what, eight nights in a hotel on the way yeah. up and on the way back and had uh, some time with our family while we were up there in Wisconsin. And I think it's just eight nights and Ugh. <laughs> you know, you're changing, changing hotel rooms, lugging all that luggage in every time, every night because it was cold. You couldn't leave things in the in the vehicle. You had to take it all in with you every night and take it all back out again. And you and don't then, know what it's going to be like when you get there, when you get into the room, until you get there and get into the room. <laughs> yeah. So. When you travel by RV, you have a fridge and your own kitchen and your own kitchen tools and things like that. One of the hotels we stayed at um, during the time of my mom's funeral was one of those with the suite in it that had a, sm a kitchen and it was supposed to be a stocked kitchen. Well, there were several things that they didn't have that I normally would have in my kitchen. So I kind of missed not being able to cook the way I normally would. <laughs> Besides the motel room and the inconveniences or conveniences they offer when you're traveling by car you have to carry everything in a cooler and you you have to keep it cool and then you have to keep it someplace that you can get at it without having to climb through and over everything else to get to it <sighs> so or else that, you have to eat at restaurants yeah and we don't want to do that uh, for one thing it costs a lot of money for a second you're not getting healthy food that way and so we, we really, staying healthy is very important to us. And we do everything in our power to make good choices on that. An RV takes up more space in a parking lot 
uh, and it's it's a little bit more challenging to drive some of us don't care to drive the bigger vehicles so uh, and and then uh, the the positive side is that when you come out of the store you can find your vehicle very easily <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, with a car a car or a van you can park pretty much anywhere so that's definitely an advantage there and closer to stores if it's pouring rain RVs and the trucks that pull them are going to get much poorer gas mileage. Our truck, we figure, would maybe have gotten about 8 to 10 miles per gallon on this trip if we had taken the pickup. One of the reasons, as we explained in our last video, for taking a van, a rental van, was because we would have more space. We were bringing some things back with us for my niece and we had other things going on that it was just nicer to have the space but the comfort the much more comfortable ride we have a 1998 truck so it's 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 not going to have a smooth ride it's built for towing and it does a great job at that <laughs> but the gas mileage with the van we got was between 24 to 29 miles per gallon big difference This is probably the one thing I miss the most about not living in a house house. Internet. <laughs> <laughs> in order to have good internet in an RV, you have to invest in a lot of things that, you know, like hotspots for your phone. We know people that have three different cellular carriers, three different companies so that they can get um, better range for hot spots and things like that. We know people that have these big towers that they put up on their RVs to get better internet. We're staying in an RV park right now and we're right next to the tower and we mm -hmm. sometimes don't have internet. So it is something that um, in a house you're going to probably, depending on where you live, you have a better chance of getting more reliable internet. And a motel is going to have fairly decent internet, but it's not always private, but it works. Yeah. So. When traveling by RV, we can't always stay in RV parks, which means that we don't always have access to a full hookup with water. And if you don't have a full hookup with water, you have a limited supply. Uh, and that cuts back on the amount of water you can use for cleaning up. So can't have showers every night, maybe a sponge bath and maybe some wipes. But uh, We use baby wipes yeah. sometimes. And it works. Um, Nobody's told us we stink. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody ever stands upwind from us, so, or downwind, um, yeah. upwind. <laughs> so I, I suppose maybe that's one of the advantages of motels. It was kind of nice having a shower every day. <laughs> and it didn't have to be a military shower either. <laughs> when we do take a shower in our RV, we usually do the water, you lather up, you, you, you turn the water off while you're doing that, and then you turn it back on to rinse off and you're out. I mean, it's like a five minute thing. So <laughs> having a longer shower was kind of nice. <laughs> Traveling by RV can also mean that in certain climates, you're not going anywhere. Uh, when it gets really cold up north, well, even before it gets cold, they close down all the campgrounds sometime mid to late October. So if you're going up in December or January, it can be difficult finding a place to park with any kind of hookup. And then trying to keep everything from freezing is even greater challenge. We don't have copper piping in an RV. You have plastic tubing. <laughs> yeah. So you really have to be careful about those kinds of things. The insulation factor is, is minimal too. So, yeah. And ours is only a two or three season camper at best. So it, 
the walls are thin, the insulation is thin. Single it, pane windows. <laughs> it works good for three season weather, but when things get below 30, it uh, can get very cold. Mm -hmm. Typically with a car, you can go when it's cold out, but if it's snowing, blowing, crazy, icy, like it ended up being right on our tail and followed us down to back to Houston, <laughs> we got back the day before the storms hit. Um, then, yeah, then you have to be careful um, and not go out in that. Some but, of the roads that we came back on, we saw on the news reports the next day were snow covered, icy, slippery, and cars and trucks stuck everywhere. So yeah. thank God we made it back in great shape yeah. on great roads. Yep, but would not have wanted to do that trip with the RV. One of the big perks of traveling by RV is people. <laughs> you know, we have we have spent an hour talking to someone that we meet in a parking lot who is also traveling in their RV. We were parked, um, I guess we should back up a little bit for those of you who are new to our channel. Gary is a retired pastor who keeps unretiring. And right now we are serving a vacancy in Houston area, Houston, Texas area. And uh, for the first six weeks, we were in the church parking lot and out trying to meet people and going out for walks and everything. And we just weren't connecting with anybody. It was just really strange. You say hi and they say hi and they keep on walking. They keep on going, yeah. Keep on walking and, yeah. And uh, here in the RV park New that Year's, we got into yeah. just after Christmas. It was after New Year's because we... That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we haven't been in it very long and we've already met several people here and had long conversations with them. We've connected with them on on all kinds of issues and topics and things like that. And it's just an entirely different mindset. When we were at the motel or hotel, we met one lady and her daughter in the pool room while I was doing laundry. I did a load of laundry and I thought, well, I don't want to go back up to the room, so I'm just going to go explore the hotel a little bit. And on the same floor was the um, the swimming pool. So I just went in there just to kind of see and I met this lady and her daughter. And we had a great conversation. But for the most part, when you go into a hotel or a motel or a Airbnb or whatever, it's pretty much you talk to the people at the front desk, and after that, you really don't have a connection with very mm -hmm. many people. So that is probably our favorite thing, one of many favorite things about living in an RV is the people. Years ago, before we had an RV, the first time we had one when, the, when our kids were younger, but before that, my idea of camping was going to a hotel. That was, that was, I just could not imagine being in an RV. And now since we have lived in an RV this long and everything, it's just been, it's been really nice. We really, for the most part, really, really like traveling by RV over, over a vehicle and motels and hotels. Mm -hmm. So we would love to know what you think. Leave your comment down below. Just, uh, you'll see the word comments down there. You might see a comment already there. If you just click on that, then it'll open up a space for you to leave your comment. And we love your comments. We really enjoy it when you, when you keep in touch with us and stay connected with us. You can also stay connected with us through our Facebook page, Roads of Faith. And we have um, quite a few other things on there. They were the first to know about our trip and going up and when we got back. Like this video if you, if you like it. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet by clicking on that red button below that says subscribe. And then next to the bell is going to pop up. Click on the bell and you will be notified every time new videos come up. And until next time, God, God bless. bless.